that good there? You focused on my crotch? <laughs> Hey guys, Jeremy here, Mark's back, and now we are starting the second part of our reviews. Uh, we've finished the entire Nightmare on Elm Street series, and now we're doing the Friday the 13th series, all of which I have never seen except for Jason X. It's just the like worst one you can possibly watch. So we're watching the first movie, the Friday the 13th one, the one that everyone always loves to reference, how... Ooh, Jason wasn't in that one. It's his yeah. mom. Which I, I don't think... I think Scream taught me that, too, when I was, like... I mean, Scream came out when I was, like, 12, and I'd definitely seen the majority of the Friday the 13th by then. But I guess I forgot, because I sure, just like Drew Barrymore, said Jason Voorhees. And, oddly enough, while watching this movie, you would have no fucking <laughs> clue it's her up until she literally appears. There's two things I will definitely say I had issues with about this movie is the first is you don't give a shit, really, up until about like the last half hour when there's only one girl left. And that is because of how terribly paced this movie is. There are several scenes in which the camera just focuses on something and then waits until it's completely gone. Yeah, like the, either the, a Jeep. The or, Jeep driving in when they the, first what, get what, the um, when they first show up at Camp Crystal Lake, you like follow this thing around, it goes like out of frame and then comes back in and keeps driving out of frame. The, at the end, where the girl's shot. running with the, the lantern or whatever, yeah. like she's running and you're like, I can't or, even uh, see. Or Ralph on his bike, which they do cut away from briefly, yeah, but, but yeah. then they go back to I him. made the joke, I was like, oh, I wonder if, oh, hey, they cut on that. I wonder, well, I thought they were going to hold on him. Oh, no, wait, they're going back. Yeah, they okay, back. this is really awkward. Five minutes of unnecessary footage. Of people and <laughs> items and even, things just even going in the away. end, of, like the long take of her building the barricade, where she's it's like just a camera just following her. She's going through the room, and then at one point the chair falls down, and yeah. she just like tries to put it back up again. And it's like <laughs> there's so much stuff in this movie that was like, yeah, man, was anyone there to just like cut it, cut it? It is like a dead teenager movie, to quote Ebert. Um, there's no character development. Okay. Kevin Bacon's. Literally just Kevin Bacon because he's just like he gets Kevin laid and then Bacon. he dies. Great death though. Oh really yeah, cool that was death. actually Love a it. Good just death. like yeah, arrow like, right through the neck, right like through the super neck, cool. Yeah. That was actually pretty good. Um, some of the deaths are great. Even the, the girl he's banging in that scene, like you don't see oh, it right away, but you get the aftermath with the oh, axe in her face. Oh, and, oh, you mean the? Ah! Yeah, it's great. Uh, she just lets herself take it. <laughs> um, Kevin Bacon would approve. And uh, <laughs> bacon bits, bacon bits. Um, <laughs> You get the axe in the face, you get a few cool ones. I actually like some of the stupid ones, like when the, the guy, Christy, Steve Christy, who runs the camp out there, he's like, oh, hey, what are you doing out here? And the, at the yeah. camera, like, it looks like it's almost supposed to be like, like there's a 3D gag they missed there on the <laughs> other side of it. When the kills happen, they're interesting. They're not sloppily done, except for the <laughs> one, in my opinion. But uh, what I found was weird is this film felt like a student film. The first two thirds of the film is literally like a student film. It's just the same very sloppy, very long take sort of stuff. They Not much they character don't appear development, really bad acting. It's like all yeah, no all handheld. There's no sticks. There's nothing sitting. It's these really long, awkward Slightly, he caught the camera actually bumps in the very first shot. Yeah, the, the first shot. They're trying to do it, and you know, the camera's coming down. Yeah, coming down. And then it's like holding on the camp. It says Crystal Lake Camp, 1958. <laughs> I don't think they mentioned that it's a Friday, but apparently it is a Friday. Like I guess uh, maybe they do. Um, the film says it's like, like there's like, no point to this day. movie being Friday the 13th, other than like the tagged on. And today was his birthday. Um, Oh, I wow, I didn't even see yeah, that. that. I, didn't, the, I totally so didn't see hear that. That's part. the only reason it's there, and as far as I, I'm pretty sure no other movie references the whole Friday the 13th thing. They just mm -hmm. keep the name, because uh, uh, Cunningham, here's a tidbit for you. Cunningham, before this movie had a script, before it had anything, he thought to himself, I can sell a movie called Friday the 13th, and took an ad out in Variety magazine promoting this film he didn't have anything more to try to get people involved and get money for wow. it and it worked so i Jeez. guess props to sean cunningham um definitely but uh yeah that it, it that they just picked a name that could work um they were ripping off halloween which was really successful they liked the slasher they wanted to go with that sort of thing and uh 
I mean, it, obviously this it worked. This movie made a ton of money, and uh, it made. It was a eleven to sequels if you count Freddy yeah. vs Jason and a remake, that's, that's and nuts. another reboot apparently coming down the line. Oh, it's not an awful movie, <laughs> but in terms of having started with Nightmare, the thing that I was saying when we were watching Nightmare, and the same thing was with this movie is we know what the twist is, so we're just kind of waiting for the film to catch up to it. Whereas with Nightmare, it was interesting to see how no one, you didn't know what was Freddy's past, really. Yeah. It was very, very lightly touched upon. And hell, he didn't even have any dialogue, barely had any dialogue. Yeah. This one, it just feels like it's just poorly made. Well, they, I mean, as far as the, the killer thing, uh, they apparent, apparently there's a version of the script that had like a bunch of little clues stacked in throughout the movie and they for budgetary reasons for time reasons and for just sean cunningham deciding he didn't really want to they decided to really go out of their way to make it be nobody until the end of the movie which i kind of liked because i didn't other than the fact they use the same jeep which is a bit of a giveaway but they use the same jeep for like every car in the whole yeah, movie because it's but um jeep. i wonder if back in 1980 people believed that mrs Voorhees was innocent until it started going because she plays it great I mean... Oh, when she appears, no, that Like, works. that whole that, thing, that, that, that whole part. bit, she's great. I really like her, yeah. like, the whole, like, kill her, mommy, kill yeah, her. Yeah, no, she's which is where pretty good. Which is where, mama. It's not, which everyone assumes it is. Uh -oh. uh, it's actually, kill, 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 mom, mom, mom. Uh, he, the oh. Harry Manfredine, oh. the guy who did the music, took the from kill and the ma from mine. It's actually, which when oh. I do it, doesn't sound right, but when you hear Harry Manfredini do it, who did it in the, it's dead on. Like it comes from him watching the composer watch that scene where he says, "Kill her, mommy! Kill her! Kill her for me!" That's where he got the idea to do that. There's definitely more interesting tidbits to this for sure than I would have originally thought. But like I said, just from how the movie starts, I I only really clued in into like the last half hour. I was like, oh, well, interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, back to my phone. I, this it's, movie does not did not age well. Well, I mean, that's the big thing. It's a dead teenager movie and it's all gags that we've seen and it's made off of very done better. Budget. Yeah, we've seen the gags done better since we've seen the same type of stories told a billion times. Mm -hmm. um, it, it only ages well because everyone knows it. Yeah. Like, it's got that nostalgic value. It's got some cool moments. It's, you know, other than Animal House, it's like the first big role for Kevin Bacon. Yeah. It's and cool. I, if I had watched this earlier, if I had watched this when I was younger, it probably would have been better for me. But, I don't know, just as an introduction film into this series, if I wasn't already committed to watching the rest of this, <laughs> I'd almost be like, I'd almost be ready to put my foot on the brake right don't, now. Don't keep too much of your faith up for the rest of this I know. <laughs> I'm, I know. But that's the thing. Like, for an opener, like, Nightmare had me because of the visual effects, like just yeah. the, the, the visual, like the special effects, like how they were able to make all the kills interesting. That was what kept me coming back throughout all the ones was the practical effects. Well, this one doesn't have really anything except well, the, for the funny. The, the funny thing is, is this one, like it's Tom Savini, who's a god in mm -hmm. special effect makeup. Um, like a year earlier, he just did Dawn of the Dead, which was like him doing like the, the gore effects in that were unheard of like he was doing stuff that no one else was doing until guys that came on with nightmare like the knb guys and all those guys that came a little bit later like tom savini was the guy who you wanted to do that but again i think that just comes from the age that he was doing all this stuff that even he himself has done infinitely better in the intervening years like the the nice thing about nightmare was they did a lot of really cool stuff that Dream spinning room and the dream yeah. they had a lot more to play with whereas this is just killing stuff and violence and gore in that regard and you can do that better as technology's gotten so and it basically hasn't... any movie can do that that was the thing that was the creative spin yeah. on the nightmare movies was the fact that they were killing them with dream aspects so this one will definitely be a bit of a more of a push for me considering there's more movies of this too yeah, yeah, which is 10 movies in the original fucking in doesn't the make any sense series. i don't understand how there's more friday movies than there are nightmare they movies. started earlier i'll give you like the and they came out the same way right like um, I think 
each year. The next one comes out in 82, and then it's 83 for the third one. Oh, for God's So, like, it, it's pretty quick. That's one nice thing about the series is Sean S. Cunningham kind of stayed involved as a producer. So he's like a James most Wan. Of it. Well, yeah, he kind of stayed around, whereas, like, Wes Craven pretty much by the end, of, by the, after the third movie, had nothing to do with, and he didn't have anything to do with the second movie. It's his first three and seven for Wes Craven, for the yeah. creator. Um, another bit of cool tidbit, um, Sean S. Cunningham and Wes Craven worked together on Last House on the Left. Oh. Sean S. Cunningham produced that. Ooh. So there was some relatability there. Uh, anyway, between the two series, beyond just you know things like Freddy vs. Jason. I, I I don't know. Like this movie, if I were have to choice, definitely so far, I would watch Nightmare One over this one, <laughs> for sure. That's I think it's just because of how generic it yeah. is. It to me until the end, because again, yeah, that's Palmer ending, rocking, it, which yeah. almost like that, isn't, that isn't the bit that isn't fight the yeah, that was that's a good really fight. Good. It was a very real kind of brawl, like um, slapping the shit. I guess it probably doesn't give you a whole lot of faith since now it becomes a giant well, hulking dude well, after this. From... Well, that's what I mean. Like now <laughs> it's going to be a different movie. Like the yeah. second one will be a different movie compared to this. So that's what I'm kind of Bag looking forward Jason. to. So for ratings, I'm going to be a bit harsh, <laughs> and this is this gets a three. I, you know, I, I don't even think that's harsh. Three out of seven for I, me. I think because like, there's like there's zero rewatchability for this. Like, this is literally watch Kevin Bacon die a lot. Like, yeah, you, like, I mean rewatchability in whole. Like, you yeah. can look up clips on the internet, but watching this movie from beginning to end again, fucking shoot me if we actually had to this do that. The, this is probably the tenth time I've seen this movie start to finish. <sighs> Fuck. I can watch these shit. I don't know how. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I agree, though. I think I'd throw a three out there as well. Like, I mean, even compared to its contemporaries like I don't think this movie is as interesting as the original Halloween I don't think it's as interesting as other horror movies that came out that year I think I read a stat that it was like 18th um, for box office for horror movies but I mean granted things like The Shining came out this year mm -hmm. you, you know so yeah but I mean it's not it's not a great movie I like the ending a lot I re once Betsy Palmer shows up and plays Mrs. Oh, Voorhees like that was I think that movie at that from that point on is really cool but overall it's it's generic, and it might it might be generic an archetype. It might be an archetype, so I'm not going to take away from it. But I hate Citizen Kane too, so I mean, <sighs> it doesn't matter how revolutionary and new you can be, you can still suck 20 years later, 30 Ooh. years later. All right, guys. So that's our first review for the first Friday the 13th movie. The, on se up. the second one will be Part when Jason two. appears, yeah. and hopefully. There's not as many long takes. I like the Jason Because I could just well. like, you know, if I'm going to make homage to this, I'm literally just going to walk away from the camera right now. And that's how we'll end it. Go Hang on, you got to get back into frame, though. Oh, yeah, get, I'm coming back. You got to get back into frame. This is basically the movie. So anyways, this is the end of the review, guys. So uh, we'll see you next time. Later. All right. <laughs>